Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about the different types of chemical reactions. It's... Welcome back. You know, while the theme music was playing, I quickly wrote down all the stuff behind me. So let's take a look at it. Alright, so we are talking about the different types of chemical reactions here. And as you can see, there are six main types of reactions. But before we get into what's different about all of them, let's take a look at what's actually the same about all of them. So let's take a look at each of these examples here, and you'll notice that every single one of these has an arrow right in the middle of the equation. And that arrow is always pointing towards the right. This arrow is what separates the reactants from the products and uh, between the two reactants, they are separated by a plus sign, and between the two products, they are also separated by a plus sign. And that is actually about where the similarities end. Let's talk about what makes them different. All right, well, let's start with our first one up here, which is synthesis. Let's think about the word synthesis, which was a lot like the word synthesize, which means to make something new. All right, so in a synthesis reaction, you are making a new product. And the identifying characteristic of a synthesis reaction is that it has only one product, right? You got two reactants to make one product. Now compare that with the decomposition reaction. The decomposition, right, the word decompose means to break down. So it is the exact opposite of synthesis. Here, where we are making one new product, here we are starting with one reactant, and it is breaking down into smaller elements and or compounds, all right? So synthesis makes one product, and decomposition has one reactant. That's its identifying characteristic, okay? The next category is called single replacement. Well, just think about the name, single replacement. Something's being replaced, and it's only one thing that is being replaced. Let's take a look at our example here. So we've got copper and silver nitrate right here. And if you'll notice, on the product side, the copper has now taken the place of silver, and copper is now bonded to the nitrate, and the silver has been kicked out, and it's all by itself. That is a single replacement. In this case, the copper replaced the silver. Now, what is the identifying characteristic of this? Well, you could try to analyze the entire equation and try to find out what one thing is being replaced, or you can identify the pattern and recognize that pattern and see that a single replacement equation is made up of an element and a compound. Element and a compound. So the identifying characteristic of a single replacement reaction is that there is one element and one compound on both sides of that arrow. Compare that to double replacement. All right, so if single replacement, you've got one thing being replaced, well then a double replacement, you have two things being replaced. I know, it's a good thing you're sitting down. All right, so you can see here that we've got lead and chlorine together lithium and sulfate together, but on the other side, they have all switched partners. Lead and sulfate are now together, and then lithium and chlorine are now together. There is your double replacement. Two things are being replaced. And its identifying characteristic is the fact that you have two compounds on both sides of the equation. Over here with single replacement, it was one element and one compound on each side. Here, Everything is a compound, right? Two compounds here, two compounds there. That's double replacement. Now there is a very specific kind of double replacement reaction called the acid-base reaction. All acid-base reactions can be classified as double replacement. The difference is that here we have something very specific that we're looking for. Obviously it's called acid and base, so we're gonna have an acid and a base. But what does that mean? So our definition that we're gonna go with for right now is that all acids start with hydrogen, 
and all bases end in hydroxide, in OH. And one of the products is always H2O, okay? So we still have the double replacement going on where hydrogen and hydroxide have come together to make water, and then potassium and bromine have come together to make potassium bromide. So there's your double replacement, but it is a specific kind because you've got a hydrogen there making an acid, you've got a hydroxide here making it a base, and one of your products is water. A very specific kind of double replacement reaction. Last but not least is everyone's favorite uh, type of equation, which is the combustion reaction, right? And as we all know, combustion requires fire, and fire requires the presence of oxygen in order to burn. So the combustion reaction must have oxygen as one of the reactants. So you have some kind of fuel plus oxygen and it will always give you carbon dioxide and water. So the combustion reaction is actually the easiest one to identify because it's essentially the same equation every time. The only thing that's different is the fuel that is listed right here. Other than that, it's all the same. The oxygen is a reactant, carbon dioxide and water are the products. That's it, that's how it works, all right? So if you have any further questions, please comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this is your first time watching, please hit that subscribe button and join us on this adventure known as chemistry. Remember, I'm not Dan and neither are you. Check you later. Bye.